Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. I'm here with some of my team today. This is going to be five tips on how to become the best salesperson. Get ready to level up. Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy. So today's going to be about the five tips to become the top salesperson. I've got a couple of my guys with me. We got Ian and Evan Macklin, the twins. They were the number one, number two salespeople. 10 year running. Kicking straight Evan's butt 10 years running. For mm -hmm. Nissan. Not mm -hmm. true, man. Not true. Mm -hmm. Evan's guys, the reigning he, champion. These guys we all know that's a lie. And they work for me now. Long story short, they crushed it, they kill it, they broke every record. They're 31 years old. We got Ryan Musin right here. Guys, Ryan's a savage. Look at that smile on Ryan. <laughs> Freaking beautiful. Oh, he's jacked up. Listen, Ryan broke every record in the store. It's Killed just it. a game changer to be around great people. We're glad you're with us. Look, so we want to talk about some tips that will help you crush it and kill it uh, to go to the next level. I'm gonna start out with something that I like, and if you don't plan your day, right, you're gonna have your day plan you. Ooh. I see this all the time, that people don't plan to fail, they fail yeah, to plan. Right. I created, when I sold, it was so important to me to time block my day, I created, created my own weekly crush it planner. This was mine, I didn't sell this, I wasn't a trainer, I was a sales pro, okay? And what I did is that I created my own book that allowed me to time block my day and be different than everybody else. And I'm just going through a little example here of how this book looks. This is the same book that I used when I sold. And before I get into how it really helped me, if you guys want a copy of this, I'll give you this for free. Literally, like we train 170,000 salespeople around the world. We want to see you do well. You send us a text right now, 918-210-0254. I'll send you the weekly Crush It Planner. Uh, you can have it. You guys can go time block it, change it a little bit around and run your day. But anyways, people don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. Right. And as you go into the store, the first thing that people do is they waste half their day on non-income producing activities. Right. Let me say you that again. Non-income producing activities. Does the coffee pot make you money? Nope. Okay, just talking about sports make you money. Nope. And I know it's cool. I know it's cool. Listen, this is the difference between the one percenters and the 99 percenters. If you want to be one of the top sales pros in the world, you got to time block your day. Look, there's 60 minutes in an hour. How you work 60 minutes in that hour is who and how you run your operation. And by the way, this is your own business. So my first tip would be to tell you to gather something that allows you to time block your day. And at the end of the day, if you can't organize and structure it, you're never gonna get paid what you're worth. Me, I got ADD, I run everywhere. This book really just helped ground me in, hey, from eight to nine o'clock, this is what I need to get done. And when nine o'clock came time to get done, guess what? I'd look up and I'd got more done in one hour than most people have got done in one day. Okay, so uh, let's pass it off. Ian, what do you got? I would say that you have to be really aware. You know, number one, when a customer comes in, you have to observe more than you say. If you're just talking, but nothing's coming out that's relevant to the customers, then well, they're gonna be lost. Which so, is why a lot of people hate car sales. Right, right, exactly, because they're just talking, they're letting maybe their energy overshadow what matters to the customer most. So am I gonna bring the energy that my brother's gonna get into? Yeah, but I'm also gonna be very aware of who that customer is. Who am I talking to? What's going on around in the dealership? What's going on in the car? In the walk around video that you did, you have to be very aware of the last salesman, you know, opening the car. They could have, you know, bottles in the car, things like that. You know, so I'm gonna be aware of the car, the trade, the customer, the pencil. If I give the manager all the wrong information in doing the deal, then they're gonna probably give me back a pencil that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm aware of the customer. I'm observant. I'm not saying things that don't matter necessarily to that customer. Also, a big tip that I had when I was in the business was I had a planner similar to yours, not as badass as this one, but really cool. I would write on the back of stuff and I'd have a little file of like things that they mattered to the customer. I would write that down as I went with the customer so that if I ever got lost, I had the things written down that mattered to them and I would always go back to it. I think the customers could sense, you know, if I'm writing things down and I'm making sure that I'm hinting on everything that they're saying, that you know they actually know that I'm listening. I'm also repeating back to them, very aware of what they're saying so that they know I'm interested. A lot of times 
if we're not observant, we don't necessarily know what they're saying. We're, we're not saying things back to them. So they, the conversation can get a little scatterbrained. I want to say back to them what they said that's important to me so that they know I'm listening. And one of the ways that I would do that is I'd have something to write down so that I could write down a little bit about that customer. And then that way they know that I'm observing everything that they're doing. Yeah. What he's saying guys, you got two ears, two eyes, right? One yeah. Mouth. Very simple. Two ears, two eyes, one mouth. His, listen to what they say. Obviously, when they say something, repeat it back to them, right? Because right. if people feel like they've been heard, they'll hear you. That's important. And then also watch the way people move. Yeah, watch you know the mean? way they move. If, you if watch the way they talk. Feels unmotivated. If they look unmotivated, raise and increase the energy in yeah. the deal, right? They'll lower your energy yeah. to the level of the room, increase the energy. Maybe yeah, they need that. Mirror, you know, right. maybe they need that. Maybe you need to be aware to like look these guys may be going through something raise their energy don't make it so you know how they are don't mirror them exactly you got to mirror them a little bit but raise the energy have awareness to that customer and tailor your presentation to that customer really. yeah be generally a great person yeah 100 percent. yeah love honest it. authentic i love it evan what do you got for us I, I think it comes down to connection everybody's always looking for the silver bullet in car sales yet we forget to just establish the connection with the people show genuine interest in them Ask them questions about them so you can figure out who you're selling a car to. How are you gonna sell a car to somebody and you really don't even know them? A lot of the times, the customer pulls in, we run out there, we talk to them, we start running around the running around the lot like order takers. Guys, slow down, establish a connection with them, talk to them, figure out their family, ask them questions. Who's gonna be using the car? What are you gonna be needing in the vehicle? What do you see that this vehicle didn't have that your that your next car needs to have? You need to start asking them things that are gonna tell you which way to lead them. It's all about connection. I mean, every single time you meet somebody, you should be thinking in the back of my in your head, how can I connect with this person? So that way I can further find out what I can do to solve their problem. At the end of the day, we're problem solvers. If you can't figure out what how to connect with the customer, you're never gonna be able to solve their problem. Yeah, that's it. What he's saying is that, hey, build a best friend. Yeah. Build a damn best friend. And if you don't build a best friend, you're probably not gonna surface the dominant buying motive. Right. Which at the end of the day, if you don't do that, you don't solve the problem, you ain't got a deal. Right. It's that simple, guys. So I want you to think about it. What we talked about is, number one, uh, if you don't plan your day, right, you're gonna get your butt kicked, okay? So people don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. Don't fail to plan. He talked about getting jacked up, right? Making sure that you're observant, mm -hmm. listening to what people are saying, and truly listening, right? I mean, I just, I just say, I think it's one of the big misses, missing pieces. And then we got connection. my man right here talking about connection. Mm -hmm. I've never seen somebody leave when there was a connection made. Right. Right. Especially if you're great at selling and you can make the connection. That's the deadly sword, right? Ryan, what do you got for us? This is an easy one that a lot of salespeople miss out on. It's smile. All you gotta do is smile, a big smile. No one likes a grumpy, frowny face salesperson. Poopy so pants. Poopy <laughs> pants salesperson. So please put on that big smile, make everyone's day way better. That's an easy one. Yeah, guys, listen, and one of, the, one of the coolest things is when Ryan was training in the first 30 days, remember when he came to your yep. first master yep. closer seminar and he came out and trained with us, one of the first things that we noticed when he walked into the room was his smile. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. He was dressed sharp. He looked good. Hell, I thought he'd been selling his whole life. Yeah, yeah well, that's I what I asked know how you. Old he right. was. I said, hey, how long has this guy been selling cars? Who is that guy? You know, so that smile was just a natural connection to everybody. Well, in the room. and it was a presence. You walk in the room, you're smiley, you're happy, you shake somebody's hand, and you really smile, and you, you're grateful to be there. People can sense that energy. It gets into that connection. It gets into that observation. So that way, you provide that next level of experience that somebody's looking for. You can almost Nobody, say whatever you want when you're smiling. You can say whatever you want when you're not smiling. Not necessarily almost. that you yeah. should. But. Yeah. Hey, well, listen. I just want to say that's a great point. Smile. We don't need poopy pants. Anybody that's running around the store acting like. You you know, they're uh, not jacked up and just in love with being there. There's a difference between welcome to my home and welcome to the dealership, right? right? Welcome to the dealership smells like a car dealership, smells like a car salesman. Welcome to my home is that nice smiling guy okay. saying, hey, so glad you guys are here, what's going on? And all of a sudden, by the way, just smiling with your with your teeth and your in your mouth, he's also smiling with his eyes, okay? I just wanna tell you, there's a difference. And if you can smile with your eyes, that's when it's deadly. All right, guys, and let's finish out with tip five. This is gonna be become the best by studying the best. Let me explain this to you, all right? So what I learned when I was younger, all right? I trained on the Cardones, I trained on the Verdes, okay? Uh, anybody I could get my hands on, Tom Hopkins, anything I could get my hands on. I, I started to learn that this world is your library. 
If you know what you're looking for, it'll give you what you're looking for. So my goal is, is that I wanted to find, obviously entrepreneurs all over the world that were great, that were risk takers, that came from nothing, that ended up with the most, that were relentless, that had great skill, that were great at public speaking. You know what I'm saying? People that I wanted to be like. I wanted to find those people and I wanted to study them, okay? But I wanted to find somebody niched down in my space, okay? We are in the automotive sales space. Automotive, okay? And I want you to think about it. The last year that I sold, I made 716 grand. I want you to think about this. If earning a good income and having and creating your own lifestyle is extremely important to you, training with people that have been there. My mentors in life are people that have gone where I want to go. You can learn from a 20 car manager and you can be the best 20 car hand in the world. And I'm not saying that you should learn from anybody, everybody in the world. The world's your library. Learn from us all, but also those people that broke all those records, okay? Study them, study them to death. As these guys were the number one, number two with Nissan 10 years straight running, I want you to think about it, okay? How'd they do it? How did it physically happen? Well, they weren't born with it because the best salespeople aren't born. They're made, self-made, right? Self-made. So what I would tell you is that take your, yourself right now and I want you to just picture a bucket, okay? And you're trying to pour success into it and that's to fill the bucket up like it's water. But if there's holes in that bucket, it'll never fill up. It can't, it'll leak out of it. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at yourself right now and I want you to just take a piece of paper and I want you to draw like a bucket and I want you to just draw some holes and say, all right, this is a hole that I have in my game. I don't smile enough. I don't know why I'm not a funny person. Yes, you are. You are a funny person. Okay. You have to convince and trick yourself to believe that you're a funny person. Okay. Or you'll never become one. You have to decide to trick yourself into success. You say, I'm shy. No, you're not. You're not shy. Okay. You can talk to anybody. Everything that you want in life is on the other side of being uncomfortable. We were all shy until we weren't. We all hated the camera until we didn't. You got to understand this. If you really want to be the best salesperson, and this isn't even a tip because it's tip six, but that could probably be the best tip of all is that just be you. And guess what? Don't fear anything. Fear will kill you. You got to have the courage. Great salespeople have massive amounts of courage. Would you agree? Absolutely. Right. Massive. Okay. Absolutely. So as you're watching this video, look, if you know who you want to be, go become that person. It doesn't matter who you are now. It matters about who you're becoming. And if you want this weekly crusher planner, it's simple. Send me a text. I'll shoot it over to you. You can print it out. Try it for a couple months on your own. Time block your day. Go kick some butt. 918-210-0254. Go crush it and kill it, guys. You be the next uh, future record breakers. Go destroy it.